Kelp now are number three, the mayor of Central Park, take two. Peter Lawford's residence. Oh, hi, Pete. This is Red Skelton. Do you have Frank Sinatra's phone number? Thank you, Pete. All the way. <laughs> hi, Frank. Red. No, Red Skelton. <laughs> Say, do you have the president's phone number? Mr. President, this is Red Skelton. Do you have Bobby's phone number? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Bobby, this is Red Skelton. Do you have Jimmy Hoffa's number? <laughs> is that the prefix? Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Hoffa, this is Red Skelton. I'm getting ready to do my show, but I can't get to the studio. One of your trucks is blocking my driveway. <laughs> Something grand is cooking in the park tonight, after dark tonight, for you all. Don't just stand there, follow the band there, you're gonna have a ball. If you care for some company, take a look at the folks you'll see. Our guest stars, Ray Bolger. much, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our show. Say, I just read in the newspaper where the postal rates are going to be raised again. <laughs> I never thought I'd live to see the day when a postage stamp would be a collector's item. <laughs> <laughs> I should have said, uh, yeah, that's, I was right. <laughs> I know what's fun about this whole thing, though. The phone company now is very upset about it. <laughs> Whenever you get the wrong number and you ask for your money back, they send you a nickel, they got to spend a dime. <laughs> Hey, my cameraman at Curly came up the other day and he says, can I have a raise? I says, what for? He says, I want to ride home to mother. <laughs> when I was a kid, we used to play a game called post office. We had variations, you know. I had a thing called carousel. It was like post office, only it was more horsing around. <laughs> and this time of the year is fun, too, because it's uh, the election time. You know, that's when they're getting ready for the big swindle, see? <laughs> I heard a politician speaking the other night, and he says, uh, you send me to Washington, I promise to keep my nose to the grindstone, my ear to the ground, and my eye on the treasury. <laughs> now, personally, a guy who could do all those things ought to give up politics and go on the Ed Sullivan show. <laughs> But this is the time of the year when the citizens go to the polls and they elect new officials. Well, better known as rearranging the graph. <laughs> and one politician promises two cars in every garage, and I'm for that. Anything to get them off that freeway. <laughs> you see, I can make...
make jokes about uh, politics because I don't belong to any organized party. <laughs> I'm a Republican. <laughs> But you know, a campaign promises is sort of like getting married. It seems like a good idea at the time. <laughs> Did you hear about the, the Brown and Nixon debate up in San Francisco? Governor Brown would say something and, and uh, Nixon would say, oh yeah. <laughs> and Nixon would say something and Brown would say, oh yeah. <laughs> they both said, vote for me. And the audience says, oh yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if neither one of them got elected? <laughs> Of a playoff for governors? Huh? <laughs> hey, you know, I, I, I feel sorry for some of the politicians. You know who I feel sorry for? The guy that has to follow Kennedy into the White House. You see, Eisenhower was able to get rid of Truman's piano, <laughs> and Kennedy was able to get rid of Eisenhower's putting green. But what are you going to do with a PT boat and a bathtub? <laughs> Hey, I, I got one, one, one joke for you about Gertrude and Heathcliff. They, uh, Heathcliff is the... <laughs> I know this silly thing that's coming. You know. <laughs> says, uh, I wish I could sing like other birds. <laughs> you get me laughing, we'll be right in the middle of Jack Benny's show. <laughs> says, I wish we could sing like, I could sing like other birds. If I could sing like other birds, I would sing at all the Elizabeth Taylor weddings. <laughs> I know it wouldn't pay much, but it's steady work. <laughs> They're flying along. She says, look, idiot. Why are you flying upside down? He says, the hunting season is on. She says, well, what's that got to do with it? In case they shoot me, I fall up. <laughs> Just raring to go to hear a concert in the park. Any time of the day, we'll be sneaking away to hear a concert in the park. If you find that your mind needs relaxing, comprehend this friendly remark. There's no pill known to man that can equal our plan to hear a concert in the park. Let them use a sousaphone or a good old slide trombone and the world is ours to own. How they send us, it's tremendous. Don't complain when the strain is too taxing. Try this nice advice for a lark. You'll be happy indeed once you follow our lead to hear a concert in the park.
Skelton, Ray Bolger, and Brenda Lee in The Mayor of Central Park. there was another hand on this thing so I know it was ten after what. <laughs> Times got tough and I had to lay off one hand. <laughs> oh, what a lovely night. I better turn in because I have nothing to do tomorrow and I want to get up early and have a fresh start. <laughs> Officer, I... Freddy, it's me, Muggsy. Oh, Muggsy, I'm glad you woke me up. I was having a terrible dream. Hey, sit down, I'll tell you about it. I was dreamed that I was with Elizabeth Taylor. What's so terrible about that? In the dream, I was Eddie Fisher. <laughs> Freddy, could you put me up for the night? All the benches are taken. Certainly, Lips. Here. Freddy! <laughs> Clever! A king-sized park bench. Yeah, it's my own invention in case I ever get married. <laughs> Isn't it a lovely evening? Uh, isn't it a lovely evening? Listen to the crickets. What crickets? They were there at rehearsal. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> the little devils, they came by carrier pigeon. <laughs> oh, well, good night, Muggsy. Good night, Freddy. Freddy! Mm. <laughs> They're playing the punch! That loud music at the clock, tell them clock again! I think, Freddy, this is the fourth night in a row that our slumber has been imposed upon. Yeah, and we, you love part. And we hobos elected our own mayor to put a stop to that disturbance. Uh, hey, here comes Mayor Threadbare now. This is our chance to demand some action. Right, betcha. I'd roll the red carpet out for you, Mayor, but I'm using it for underwear. Allow <laughs> me, <laughs> Do you believe I detect a smidgen of male content? I don't smell anything, do you, Freddy? Yes, the mayor. <laughs> Your Honor, do you hear that beautiful music? Would you repeat that, please? Do you hear that beautiful music? Would you say that again? Do you hear that beautiful music? I can't hear you. That lousy music's too loud. <laughs> that is right. And if you don't put a stop to it, we'll stop you at the next election. That I heard! <laughs> yes, sir. Onward to better things. Yes. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Hello, constituents. Here is a cigar for you. Share this amongst you. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hey, 
got mine. <laughs> Poor old Castro must be having tough luck. <laughs> Crossing tobacco plants with rubber trees. <laughs> from our alternate sponsor, Johnson's Wet. Please, Mayor, those are frog's legs. You're supposed to eat leftovers. These are leftovers. The rest of the frog got away. <laughs> Somewhere, someplace, there's a frog that's hopping around on its warts. <laughs> Your protection racket is ruining me. Temper, temper. I'm taking a big chance. If my constituents ever find out I've been taking bribes, next election I'll be out on my spats. <laughs> Heaven's sake. Hello. <laughs> 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 Boy, with a blast off like that, he should be in orbit. Fredbear, the deal was to feed you and you only. Now get this juggling bum out of here. <laughs> you dirty grafter, you. Black Freddy. Think of what you do under the same circumstance. <laughs> Might want to mop me down. <laughs> I don't know what I'd do under these circumstances, but I'm going, I'm going to find out. <laughs> because I'm going to run against you. Why, that's ridiculous. <laughs> You'd be a real bum choice for mayor. I know. Hey, that's a great campaign slogan. Vote for Freddy the Freeloader. A real bum choice. Hungrier than I thought, bones and all. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Well, I've never played one of these before. <laughs> you doll. Oh, I'm too much for one man. I'm fascinating. They seem to think that I am fascinating. I was a vagrant sort of mess, I guess, devoid of all finesse, but now I'm fascinating. The other candidate who's running <laughs> cannot deny that I am stunning. This little vagabond turned out to be fascinating me. <laughs> I'm fascinating. Around the park they call me fascinating And when the time has come to vote They quote the speeches that I wrote Because I'm fascinating The man who once was rated zero Has suddenly become a hero He's still the greatest bum in history Fascinating me <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 
From coast to coast they find me fascinating I bend the mystery guest on what's my life They say I televised, it's fine, I'm fascinating If I survive this next election The White House is my new direction With my enchanting personality I'm bound to be the man who follows Kennedy Fascinating. <laughs> so ever paid off. <laughs> hold it, Monty, hold it, hold it. We're not getting any votes and we're definitely not getting any laughs. I guess you just don't have a funny stomach. Look, Monty, you work the south side of the park and I'll see if I can get any votes around here. Fellow voters! <laughs> Fellow voter, remember, don't vote for a man who may be dishonest. Vote for me and be sure. <laughs> I mean, why put another low-down skunk into office when you've got me? Hooray! Remember, my good man, when you vote for me, you're helping yourself. I vote for Threadbare and you what? Help yourself. Don't mind if I do. Thank you. <laughs> you're my opponent. Yes. You're willing to sell your vote for a lousy banana? Every man has his price. It's the well-adjusted ones who happen to know what it is. <laughs> I don't uh, uh, well, uh, mm. yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Carry on, James. Yes, forward to better things. Yes, sir. I said forward to better things. <laughs> All right, I'll go your way. Forward. <laughs> Oh, hi, Lester. I hear you're running for mayor. That's right. Mm. You, have, you, have, mm, have a banana? You got my vote, Freddy. Oh, okay. <laughs> that is if Fred Bear withdraws from the election. Disappointed, <laughs> <laughs> Freddy? Not as much as you're going to be. <laughs> <laughs> empty promises, empty bananas. <laughs>
ladies and gentlemen, the tramps and hobos are going to the polls to elect their own mayor in Central Park. And just a moment now, stay tuned, because we're going to have a political debate between the two candidates, Frederick K. Freeloader and Mr. Theodore Threadbare III. cubes under Freddy's blanket. <laughs> I still don't know why I'm hiding ice cubes in Freddy's bed. It's one way to freeze out the opposition. <laughs> no, no, get out. Yeah, bury it with that last joke. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, Freddie. Uh, Freddie. What, Freddie? Oh, I, I, I just want to say that I think you'll make a wonderful mayor as long as you live. Oh? But you ought to be just about three weeks. <laughs> three weeks? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, I sure admire your courage. Carrying on despite your fatal illness. Fatal illness? It, it, I got a fatal illness? Oh. What's it called? The Mona Lisa disease. <laughs> Disease? I have been feeling a bit drawn lately. The Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa disease? Boy, where do you get the snapper? You go with a smile on your face. Get me Ben Casey. I'd rather go with a sneer. I want you to look at this. What's the matter? Just look at this. Oh, what's oh, the matter? Boy. Just a mirror? What do we... Good heavens. You're right. They're on my tongue, on my teeth. Good heavens, even on my hat. Yeah. <laughs> Once they start spreading, they go from head to toe. No. Yes. I can take a look, and I can do it without taking the shoe off. Good heavens. They're even all over the bottom of my feet. Yeah. You're right. I've got it. The hoof, mouth, and hat disease. <laughs> <laughs> what a horrible way to go. Pokey dotted to death. <laughs> now, here, now, come on, Freddy. There's a good chap. Now, lie down and save your strength. Yes, I'm a sick man. Yes, you are. Now, and I'll go and tell them that you've decided to withdraw from the debate. Oh, that's kind of you, dear friend. Yes. You go, and I shall just wait here and wait for Medicare. <laughs> Hey, there's a thief in this room. That's a mirror. Oh, that's me. <laughs> oh, boy, is it cold. I'm shaking the spots right off. <laughs> How do you like that? Besides dying, now I'm stuck with seven years' bad luck. <laughs> you better tell Muggsy what happened. <laughs> Good heavens. I'm... <laughs> Look what that idiot did. He wrote that card backwards so I could read it in the mirror. So <laughs> Place. <laughs> They're back again. <laughs> Why, that dirty censor. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like that? He painted them pokey dots on there. And ice cubes. Ice cubes. And the worst kind, plastic. <laughs> 
I'm boiling mad, boiling mad. I think I'll lay on the ice cubes and cool off. <laughs> Good heavens! <laughs> oh, oh, now I'm getting fricasseed. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for. This great debate is brought to you by the makers of Gummo Hair Shellac. The shellac that hardens your hair for a lifetime. <laughs> so remember, before applying Gummo, make sure the part's in the right place, because believe me, that's it. <laughs> now, our first guest is honor the mayor of Central Park, Theodore Threadbare III. a man who has been down to the dumps all of his life and would like to remain there as mayor, Frederick K. Freeloader. <laughs> Mr. Freeloader, Mr. Freeloader. <laughs> Hello, Motors. Due to circumstances under which I had some control, <laughs> I mean, uh, Mr. Freeloader will not appear on this debate tonight. He took suddenly chicken. <laughs> So I will tell you some of his campaign promises. Campaign promises. Never I mind, it, I... Mayor. I'll tell my own lies. <laughs> you have no right to be here. I'm trying to lie. Gentlemen, please, the debate were on television. Oh, yes. If I'm, I'm elected. One at a time, if you don't mind, would you please be seated? All right. And we'll take the challenger first, yeah. Mr. Freeloader. Oh, thank you. Why'd you tell me that before I sit down? It's <laughs> tiring. <laughs> Fellow voters, before I make my speech, I would like to say a few words. <laughs> Here. I have a few footnotes. <laughs> Oh, here we are. Fellow hobos, if I'm elected, I promise you a chicken in every garbage can. <laughs> I'll put standing ashtrays all over the park so you older hobos won't have to stoop over for them, but... <laughs> I endorse that policy, and I think we should drink to it. Oh, no, you probably got poison in that. Well, in that case, take mine. Thank you. <laughs> One of us drinks like a pig. <laughs> <coughs> now, Freddy. If you are elected, what are you going to do to improve the sleeping conditions for a gentleman of the road? You put something in my glass. You put something in my glass. Why did you put something in my glass? Obviously, my appointment has no solution to that problem. I have, but you put something in my car. Same old political mumbo-jumbo. My no. opponent is trying to evade the question. No, no, no. And then there is your promise about unemployment. Do you promise to keep us unemployed? You can put something in my car. That's why you should vote for me. No. A do nothing mayor is bad enough, but a say nothing mayor. Say nothing. Say nothing. Put some magic on it.
promoter. Where do you think he is? Over at the Cafe de la Park, putting a stop to that music, like he promised. What a wonderful fellow. And he ain't no crook like that threadbare. <laughs> and gas on? <laughs> That's the way it's going to be from now on. Thank you, Mayor Filodo. I'm counting on you. Say, I don't like to complain about your tuna fish sandwiches, but I think they finally accepted Charlie. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Brenda Lee.
our alternate sponsor, Alpine Cigarettes. And now, Red Skelton in The Silent Spot.
will be back in a minute. Red Skelton. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We'd like to thank Ray Bolger, Alan Jenkins, and Brenda Lee, our guest stars this evening. Oh, by the way, Brenda Lee, wasn't she tiny? Uh, she really cute. All singers are little nowadays, have you noticed? I hear Kate Smith broke up into a trio. <laughs> We'd also like to thank our sponsors that made our visit possible this evening. So until next week, I'll say goodbye for now, and may God bless. Good night. This program was pre-recorded. Mark Gilmore speaking.